Hello there, people. This is Soaring Moon. I'm here recording a video for you about um making fonts. Uh, it's something I like to do. So I just figured I'd show you what I've come up with here. Um, I did a poll on Con Workshop. If you haven't been to conworkshop.info, you should go there. If you're into conlanging, they really are helpful. They have a a bunch of tools there that allow you to create dictionaries and do phoneme stuff and word generation, things like that. A lot of tools. So, check it out. But here, I'm going to show you the font I made and uh, the work that actually went into making the font. So, here I have an image, and hopefully, GIMP loads okay with me running recording software at the same time. If you're whining in the background, it's uh, my computer stand. So, this isn't exactly the. This is on a laptop, so. Looking for data files, fonts. This might take a while. Waiting for the loading. Hmm, I wonder why the fonts take so long. Could it have anything to do with me? Who knows? The point is this. Fonts. That's where it's at. Loading extension script foo, and we're in. So here we have a bunch of layers. I have a grid that I used for um, piecing the, uh, for taking the image apart when I needed to split them, because I had to draw a lot of um, of lignatures, and I tried to get the lignatures to work properly, <laughs> and they didn't because I don't have a newer version of um, a high logic font creator. I'm using an older version because I can't bother to pay for it. So, <laughs> but. And here you go. Um, so I have drawn using um, a grid. So turn on show grid and snap to grid. This allows me to take the um, stylus path tool and do whatever I need to do with it. Any path I need to take. And you see that you know that's making a line. What I need to do is actually change over to the proper brush, change my brush set settings to uh, pencil tool, change it to size 30, make sure that the pencil tool echoes the input of what I'm trying to accomplish here, and make sure it echoes that pencil tool so that we can get the calligraphy path. So that's what I've been using to draw all these up on the grid. Now there are a bunch of pages of these um, these graphemes, um, each on separate layers. And there are many of them, uh, 198 I think. And those are have been saved individually into images. So images are here. So there's one of them, there's the next one, next one, etc. And I have uh, gone to a website by the name of ImageSplitter.net, and what it does is it splits images automatically for you, um, based on how many uh, you can choose. You know, four rows and then twelve wide so to split it into the number of parts I needed, which was 48 per image. So that took all of the all the glyphs out and does all that. So then I use High Logic Font Creator and let's see, let's see here. You can preview the font. I think it's actually right here. That's what the font looks like. If I can go here, uh, open with um, other programs, browse computer program files, High Logic Font Creator. And we will automatically open it with that program. So here is High Logic Font Creator. And in order to make these uh, symbols, it required a lot of math to put them in the right locations. Because the way this um, font works is that it overlays characters, but in order to <laughs> in order to display the front font properly. 
So I'm, I'm gonna re check. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm new to using OBS, so <laughs> I was just making sure it was all recording properly. Um, in order to add a new glyph, you can just go in here. You just import an image, and I have all of the um, punctuation in here. So I'm going to take the uh, sentence demarcation uh, image that I have created, and I will generate the glyph here. So, you know, glyph done. Now, this has to be arranged properly to the previous character. And the previous character is aligned on this, um, on this line here. Um, there's no guide, but I can, it's at the 500, or the 600 point mark. So I need to take this um, and position it in a way. Um, first off, I'm going to uh, position it to 0, 0. Um, that way it's on the baseline. And move it on to. Hold on a second. No, it needs to be on X height. See how it's in the middle of the X height? I have already configured it to be in the middle. Um, on the X height is like incorrect because in this case it needs to be on the baseline. So I can take this and move it down 600, uh, 600 points from here to 300 to 600. So I can um, subtract uh, the vertical by 600 and move it down there. And this end needs to be inside of the line that's going to be located here on the previous character. So I'm going to go here to test and you say um, this is B, right? And this is the uh, sentence demarcation. But in this case, um, let's say, I'm trying to, K. If I put a space here, they, they are not connected. I want them to be connected. Um, so in order to do that, I have to move it backwards. So um, this needs to go backwards 600 pixels. And I apply that. Now when I go into the font test, you can see that these two characters are now connected, which is excellent. So um, how the font works is that um, it has two different kinds of two different like modes um, of character demarcation. So here I have a translation of um, Our Father in Heaven. So the, um, I should get the name of the prayer, but you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if you do any kind of calling. Now I have an issue, which is going to be that it does not like me doing all that in two different windows. So open up uh, Highlogic Font Creator, go test, and then go here so that we can view the both of those at the same time. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write down this long, longer um, sentence. And actually, I've um, I've made a mistake here. You actually have to tell the program when to um, where the you know, where the character wants to stop because where it was at before. If I go into the font and test it, um, if I put a period here and then I put another character. It won't. Um, it won't have it located in the proper position. Um, we need to uh, make sure it's current properly, so that it actually comes after the sentence demarcation. So I'm going to go ahead and type this as as I see it. So um, x i, and remember we're doing this right here. So x i, and you see how i is a hoop. Kind of hard to see, but let me comma. So you see how I is a hoop? It actually has, um, there are two different widths, this one and this one. So the capital letter makes the, uh, the font wider. So here's K and here's K wider. So if we wanted to say X, I, I is bringing the hoop over. So I need to use the wider X, I, J, I. So that's going to be the wider J, I. W O space C space there you go um, J I which these both need to be the wide variations J I J I space D A J I T O and then the in the um, the sentence demarcation, which 
in my romanization is a backslash. So xi, ji, wo, space, sa. Now you see that s is wide, so I need to use the, the wide variation of a. Space, ji, space, da, wide variation of a. J I T O J Y, which needs a thicker variation as well. And then the sentence demarcation. So you can see that the um the, the font has a, the issue of you having to go back and correct the uh, to the proper to use the proper width character. That um is not an issue if um, I can get the ligatures working properly. So that is my fault more than it is the the program's fault. I need to program a um, an open type uh, script in order to replace all of those characters automatically because I made the images for them. So it would replace um, uh, J and I into the correct auto, uh, combination automatically. Now, alternatively, you could just use the... Oh, let me use that one. You, you can just use that <laughs> and let the hoops drag behind. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, right? <laughs> and actually, you know, some people might prefer this. I actually think this is, this looks pretty cool on its own. Um, so you know, I might just use that in some kind of formal setting. But the it is harder to read because the each two lines represents a character and a reader of the conscript would have to know that this connection between these two is not a um, a character that is say um, what is that I'm trying to so I don't have these all memorized. I have commas in order to move those out of the way. There we go. So this, right, and this line in the middle may confuse a reader um, because they're o overlapping the two. Although if you if you know that your evens and odds going through, you know that this is the next bracketed character. But um, in order to prevent confusion, it might be wise to use the proper proper width um, characters and for some sentences it's not going to be too much of an issue the only you only really get a problem with um, particles that end with the uh sound and the e sound so so ni and na because they're both wide um, there are other exceptions to that, like the S particle is wider on the underside. Um, so there, the the font accounts for all that. The capital S, by the way, the lowercase S and the capital S are the same. Um, so it accounts for that as well. So we can take that into the fonts uh, for the computer. I'm going to save this and make sure it's exported properly. I'm going to go into this folder, copy and paste it directly into the fonts category. Open up open open office because I actually haven't done that since I installed it. I installed it pretty much for this video. Next finish. And the true type should be you know working perfectly fine. It'll be under the name Curetta, calligraphic, and the base font length should be like 
like 20. <laughs> um, but the information density of the language allows for this to not be too much of an issue. So that is the text. Although there would be some variance in the width, um, I would program a, a, a Python script to do this automatically. And of course, um, justifying the text would also uh, potentially be a, uh, a thing that you could do to mitigate some issues with the, the spacing. And uh, this works perfectly fine with this column script either way. Uh, and you can see that all of the typo text underneath it is just like, oh my god, this isn't real words, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> um, and so you can type this, of course, in uh, out as as its own thing. So know that, that is, this needs to be using the capital var uh, variation of the letter. I caps lock active for some reason. Then J A X U S U space E K C E C E yeah. Hold on. I lost my place already. X U U space C E space K I so a wide variation. So basically, every time you hit a Y or a Y or an I, just use the wide variation. So there's E B. Okay, so E. See how that like shifts that forward. That is a mistake, and good thing is using this uh, this conscript editor or the font editor in my case. Um, here's the mistake. Easy enough to fix. Save it. Bring this file back into install. Go into OpenOffice. Change the fonts around. And it's already loaded into memory at the close and reopen. But yeah, you get the you get the picture. Uh, so that is how I make fonts. And if you want a more in-depth tutorial on how to draw clips and come up with them and all that, um, yeah, you can do that. Those would be cool questions. All right, see you later. Okay, thanks. Bye.